West Africa's precious marine resources are being stripped by industrial-scale pirate fishing, all to feed seafood-hungry consumers in Europe and Asia. In the first of two special reports from Sierra Leone, Juliana Rufus tracks down the illegal trawlers and those stealing from some of the world's poorest people. Sierra Leone is home to some of the most beautiful and untouched coastlines in the world. For thousands of years, communities along the coast have depended on fishing to make a living. But today, this way of life is under threat. Thousands of tons of fish are caught in Sierra Leonean waters for consumption in Europe and in Asia annually. But not all of the trade is legal. In Sierra Leone, some of the world's most powerful fishing companies are stealing from some of the world's poorest people. Each year, Sierra Leone loses up to 29 million US dollars in fisheries income due to the illegal activities of foreign trawlers in Sierra Leonean waters. We've come here to investigate how theft on such a grand scale is possible. On our arrival, we have arranged to meet Amra Tour, an activist who is fighting to stop the exploitation of Sierra Leonean waters by monitoring and registering the activities of illegal trawlers around Sherbo Island in the south of the country. The British-based Environmental Justice Foundation, or EJF, has just equipped him with a new boat. And Amra has invited me, together with Victor Carbo, a senior government official, to show us the scale of the problem. We head into the inshore exclusion zone, or IEZ, a protected coastal area and breeding ground reserved for local fishermen, but frequently exploited by foreign trawlers. The IEZ has been designated as a spawning area for fish. So these are areas we are industrial vessels and semi-industrial vessels are not allowed to fish. But illegal fishing in the IEZ isn't the only problem. How many of the ships that are fishing off the coast of Sierra Leone actually have a license? Um, it's hard to estimate because we don't have the means to go out there and check on there. The Sierra Leonean Ministry of Fisheries currently has no functioning boats of their own and Victor hopes to collaborate with the EJF boat on future patrols. Local Hello. fishermen are constantly updating AMRA yes, on do. the activities of industrial trawlers. I will call you later, I will call you later, please. Are you getting a lot of calls with information? Yeah, about four o'clock last night, I got a call from Kaba. He is the one who is giving full information about trawlers. That the trawler normally comes closer at night, fishing, do illegal uh, fishing, then in the morning, by five, we pull out. The latest complaint has come in from the village of Bohoi. Amra takes us there so we can see the impact of industrial fishing on local communities. What happened? They have destroyed our materials, our fishing gears, hooks, nets. Even I'm one of the victims. The country from here. What time do they arrive in the evening? Around five o'clock. From yesterday evening till this morning. So do you think we can see them fishing now? No, they finished. Ah. They are still there, but have gone far. The men say their fishing equipment was damaged during the previous night. It gets dragged by the trawlers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. the bit that's left yeah. and everything else is lost. My own was 1,200 hooks. Everything, they carry away everything. Do you have the money to buy a new one? No. This is a poor community and the fishermen buy their nets and lines in installments. So what are you going to do now? Well, my problem, the only problem is later I will be harassed by the, the owner. I have to pay him, although it has been destroyed, but still I have to pay him. But the grievances of the fishermen go further still. They say the foreign boats have also caused a massive drop in catch. For the fishermen who live on sandy soils, which make agriculture difficult, this is a desperate situation. They depend almost entirely on fish for food and income. We are fishing several times with no catch. 
because of harassment of the troller. The usual fishing here, overfishing by the trawlers. So now we have no fishing. Amra is getting an update. Somebody just called me from Mania, trying to give a report on this trawler. That this morning, he saw it set into this point, the guys are saying. So does that mean the trawler is fishing now? Yeah, they are fishing down there. Illegally? Well, I can say illegally. You have to check? <laughs> you have to check. It's taken us less than an hour to get a trawler sighting, and if it's fishing within the inshore exclusion zone, it's in breach of the law. The chase is on. Amra was just saying that we've actually got one crucial advantage, that the new boat that the EJF has is so much faster than previous boats, and we can go into areas where previously there's been no surveillance and no boarding, so they don't expect us to come there. Here, here, this way. What's there? And then we see a ship at the horizon. You think that's the one the fishermen were talking about? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. The trawler is painted black, which means it's probably a South Korean trawler, called Black Faces by the locals. And the crew on the trawler seems to have spotted us too. See it changing course now, huh? You can see that it was fishing with closer to the land. And now because they have spotted this, this, uh, this craft, they are now moving out to yeah. the, the wider sea. I'm seeing the line is at the bar. What are you seeing? The line should be at the bar. They are trying to follow. Amra thinks he can see them pulling in the net so they can gain more speed and escape us. But that's not all. The identity is covered. The identity is covered. It's covered with the blue net. So we can't read the name? You can't read the name. That's an illegal practice under Sierra Leonean law and our first indication that this ship has something to hide. Fishing vessel, fishing vessel, fishing vessel. This is the fishing spot we're calling. This is fishing spot we're calling. How do you read me? Over. Victor wants to board the vessel for an inspection. And Amra records the GPS position. The vessel is moving out of the IZ. Let's get closer to the boat and okay. then ask for permission to board. We get as near as we can. As a senior fisheries ministry official, Victor is well known, and Sierra Leonean crew members should have recognized him by now. Fishing vessel, fishing Refusing a boarding officer access is also in breach of Sierra Leonean law. Victor decides to change strategy. Take a snapshot of any of the fishermen on board, which would be an evidence that uh, this was the boat. It is clear now that they won't let us board, but on the other side of the trawler, we spot a crucial clue. So they painted the name and then covered it up with a net. More photographic evidence for us. Okay. They've covered up the markings, but we can still see quite clearly that the name is the Sea Queen. Two boots. Eagle-eyed Amra has spotted a second trawler. But it ignores us too. So the net is still out? No. And they pulled it up? Yeah, they pulled it up. And they're trying to run away? Yeah. Are they even slowing down, Victor? No. With the net pulled up, the trawler is gaining maximum speed. This vessel got information from the boat we are coming from, that a uh, particular vessel is around to let them pick up the net. So that's why you see them running. The trawler is moving fast towards the open sea, and we are forced to abandon the chase. Once back on shore, we gather in the EJF office. Victor and Amra are trying to confirm whether the trawlers were really breaking the law by fishing inside the IEZ. Victor is plotting the coordinates on a naval chart. Yeah, and the position was uh, 724. 41 is the interception. So, and that's for the first one that we saw? Yeah, for the first one we oh. saw. So it was bang in yes. the middle of the exclusion zone? Yes.
How did you get the coordinates? Is that from the GPS? Yeah, when we snap a good shot, look at the GPS coordinator, coordinating directly with the boat. But things are less clear for the second trawler. Actually, according to this position, mm -hmm. right, it was outside of the IEZ. But uh, looking at the direction it was coming from, it was coming from the IEZ, right, meaning it had an activity within the IEZ. How can you tell which ship it is without the markings? Well, it's a little bit difficult, right? But um, thank God we were able to take some snapshots of um, the crew on board, some of the crew on board. So we can use these pictures again to identify the crew and then try to match it up with the pictures we have. The following morning, we head back out to sea. We want to check if our two trawlers are still fishing near the coast. On our way south, we meet three fishermen. Okay. They explained that the trawlers destroyed their nets. They lost their nets last yeah. night. Hi, hello. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 To our surprise, the fishermen tell us that the Navy at the nearby base is doing nothing to stop the trawlers. Can you sometimes see the Navy and the trawlers out at the same time? Every day, they can't hold them. They explain the illegal trawlers and corrupt members of the Navy have an ongoing arrangement. We leave the fishermen and the trawlers, which seem to be heading south towards Liberian waters, too far for us to pursue. Instead, we return to Sherbro Island to find the local Navy commander and to ask him about the allegations we've just heard. But Navy headquarters in Freetown refuses permission for an interview. We've heard a number of accusations against members of the Navy, accusing them of conniving with captains on board of illegal trawlers in return for personal gain. One thing's for sure, the 28 men based here at one of four of Sierra Leone's naval bases are woefully under-equipped. This boat here, their only one, hardly allows them to chase and arrest illegal foreign trawlers. With the suspect ships we filmed now out of reach, we feel that our time on Sherbo Island has come to an end. The following day, we arrive in Freetown. We hope that here in the capital, we will find information about the two trawlers' identities. We have arranged to meet Victor at the Joint Maritime Committee Operations Centre. And what's the JMC? Joint Maritime Committee. The JMC is a task force made up from the Fisheries Ministry, the Navy and the police to protect Sierra Leone's waters and to combat illegal fishing. Good morning. Good morning. Under Sierra Leonean law, each fishing trawler is required to have a vessel monitoring system, or VMS. Victor's colleague George Corker explains how it can help track the ships we've seen. With the VMS, we can get the history for all these vessels. If I want to know about a particular vessel on a particular date, I can track it and it can tell me the position, the time and the date. George finds three vessels that were in the location around the time we spotted the illegal trawlers. He tries to get their precise position. Mm. Uh, let's take our time to locate Five Star here. Five Star, of course, is, uh, was not on the 21st. That was the reason why my colleague here, who was on that day, make, uh, called the, 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 the people who owned the vessel. Although it is against the law, many trawlers turn their monitoring systems off, particularly if they are fishing illegally inside the exclusion zone. Aspire also, the 21st and 22nd, Aspire was also off that particular day. Is it possible that there could have been any other vessels in that area that you didn't know about? We have some vessels, of course, 
that we are yet to install transponders on them. They just came in for license and they are on the high seas, they are fishing. Altogether, George has found three suspect South Korean trawlers who appear to have disabled their vessel monitoring systems. We leave the operation center equipped with their names, the Five Star, the Apsari, and the Kung Myong. Okay, let's go and see the minister. But when we contact the director of fisheries to hand over our evidence for an official investigation, we're told he can't meet with us because the fisheries minister is abroad. Victor gets called into the ministry to write a report. And we decide to launch an investigation of our own. Our filming down south has stirred up a real hornet's nest. Many of the shipping companies, and in particular the agents, are politically very well connected. And the investigators don't want to make the first move until the fishing minister has come back from a trip abroad. In the meantime, we've had word that one of the three suspect vessels is coming into town. So we've hired a speedboat from the local yacht club in order to be able to have a look at it. We've been told it is the Five Star that has come into port and we head out to find it. Many of the trawlers in the harbour are in a dismal state. And then we see our suspect vessel. That's what we think, a black face. And we want to see its game. This is the Five Star, we've just seen its name and we think that is the one that we filmed. Once more, we gather photographic evidence. But our filming has caught the attention of the authorities. Oh, the Navy's coming to us now, we think. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. I'm seeing this boat going around doing some photograph, but I'm not aware of such a mission. Because as the boarding officer for this area, whatever that is going on in this sea, I must be informed. What I want to know, do you have anything that permits you? Sure. We have, uh, we have a permission to film in Sierra Leone. Do you have it in the yeah, sure. You can see, this is my visa and it says filming. Sub Lieutenant Bangora says he's already heard about us because his commanders have given him a Navy briefing about our filming of the trawlers in the south. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Back at the hotel, I compare the photos of the Five Star with the images of our illegal trawlers. This is the trawler that we filmed, and this is the Five Star. And I was told that there are a few things that I should look out for when I compare them. One is the hulls here in the side of the ship. There are three on the trawler that we caught. And then here's the Five Star, and then our hulls. Sadly, the trawler that we caught fishing illegally and the Five Star are not the same one. So we'll keep on looking. Illegal fishing in Sierra Leone has become a global concern, and fisheries experts around the world are beginning to help with our investigation. They can't find any references to the Sea Queen, but they are sending us photos to help identify the illegal trawlers. But as I compare the photos to our images, it becomes clear that it was neither the Kum Myong nor the Apsari which we filmed fishing illegally. With our three main suspects dismissed, it feels like we're back to square one. Having had no success contacting the director of fisheries, we try our luck with the Navy. And they agree to meet. So thank you for having us. Uh, yes, uh, thank you too for coming. Commander Kanu and Commander Conti are willing to take us into Freetown port. Stand line on deck, sir. Since the fisheries ministry currently has no boats of its own, it relies on the Navy for monitoring and inspection. To demonstrate the inspection of a trawler, the two commanders have arranged the boarding of a Chinese vessel. They say this is what happens when they are on patrol or when the fisheries ministry requires their assistance. Okay, we can allow you to go now. Okay. Assist her. Hey, can I have a minute, please? On board, we meet Bongoman, the shipping agency's logistics manager. He lets us see the cool room where the catch is stored. Oh, and slippery. Slippery, that is right. I see it's one to clear the plastic. Yep, so this is refrigerated. Yeah. 
So what fish have you caught on this? This is shrimps. This is all shrimps? Yeah, shrimps. Where are they going to? Europe. They've got Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does it say origin China? Origin China, because the vessel is from China. It is a legal but unfair arrangement for many African countries that, like Sierra Leone, don't yet qualify to export to the European market. The country of origin on the boxes matches that of the fishing companies, in this case China. Only a small number, which is meaningless to the consumer, reveals that the catch comes from Sierra Leone. Uh, Bungo, uh, thank you very much for cooperating with us. We've not found anything uh, uh, unusual. We do hope that we'll have a better cooperation each time we call upon you to board your vessel. Thank you. The commanders tell us this is the usual scenario. Virtually all foreign trawlers comply with the law. Back on land, I asked the commander's opinion on the corruption allegations we'd heard on Sherbro Island. Do you think it's at all possible that there can be corruption in the Navy where illegal fishing is involved? We have a very great record in the eyes of Sierra Leoneans and the sub region of our achievement. Notwithstanding, not everybody knows exactly what our challenges are or how much we can do. So somebody, because of ignorance, would assume that a, a Navy man is involved in a corrupt activity because he does not know the nature of our job. If they see a Navy boat goes to that vessel and comes back without like bringing that vessel under detention, they, also, ah, they have given them money. If people are proud to come forward and provide evidence they can adduce in court to prove that a serviceman is engaged in this, then we are ready to let go that man and try him. But our inquiries are taking us towards a different conclusion. Word has been getting around that we're asking difficult questions about what really happens out at sea, and a mid-level Navy insider wants to tell us his story about Navy corruption. He says fishing companies are paying so-called compensations or bribes for tip-offs on how to avoid Navy patrols. How much compensation can you get from the fishing companies? Well, all that uh, is with the commanders. Even if you catch a bigger boat, you the GM1, you want to see anything, they will prefer charge against you for being in subordination. Yeah, they will say you are, <laughs> you are not disciplined. So, Just because you're trying to do your yes, job? Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've been a victim. When I advise the officer, I say, officer, this boat is using the wrong net. The prefer charge against me. He said, well, well, in fact, who are you to talk? I said, sorry, sir, I'm just saying what I've seen. He said, but at that time, they asked link with the captain of the very boat. And I was given uh, five days extra duties. So the people in the Navy who profit from their business with the poachers are at the highest level? Yes, of course, yes, of course. Do uh, the commanders ever share the money with some of the lower-ranking members of the Navy just to keep them quiet? Yes, of course, they do that. How but much do they give to each person? Well, the highest they can give you, 100,000. 100,000 lose. Now, whatever they give you, you should not say anything. You say anything, <laughs> that's the end of you. We are beginning to get a sense how illegal fishing on such a grand scale can take place in Sierra Leone, but we're still none the closer to identifying the South Korean ships. Next week, in part two of this special People and Power investigation, we'll be back on the track of the mystery trawlers and we'll make further revelations about how the theft of one of Sierra Leone's most precious resources is being carried out. That's People in Power from Wednesday, February 1st, here on Al Jazeera. <laughs>